Hello, everybody, and welcome to Advise Econ Academy On Demand. My name is Ken Lowen, and I'm the Director of BI and Analytics at Advise Econ. In my role, I focus very heavily on helping clients and colleagues to identify and deploy reporting and analytics suites that help you to manage project, program, and portfolio management with the very best analysis of the information that your system is generating. In this, we use Power BI from Microsoft quite extensively. Today's webinar is going to talk about some recent developments Microsoft has released in Power BI. There have been a lot of them this month, and we're um, going to be busy right now. So let's go to Power BI. Our agenda today, we're going to take a look at some new look and feel capabilities and features that Microsoft has released in Power BI. We're going to look at enhancements they've made in the areas of data preparation, data connectivity, and reporting. And then we're going to wrap it up with some of the other enhancements that don't fit into those three buckets. One of the first features we see in the current window, so we're in Power BI in our web browser. And what we see up at the upper right corner here is a new look on toggle button, which is set to on. So I'm demonstrating here in the Power BI window the new features that Microsoft is releasing for use in the web service portion of Power BI. Very soon, these features are going to be released into general availability, and there will no longer be a toggle, and everybody will get it. So if you're responsible for deploying and administering Power BI in your organization, you may want to walk people through an awareness on how the new features work, how they look, and the idea that there is going to be some change. I think it'll be a welcome change for everybody. We also see over here on the left side, our vertical navigation. And so I, you can see that I've navigated to the third page in my Power BI presentation here. We have a number of other options in here also. We've got the capability to download, assuming it's allowed uh, by your user account and the person who generated the report, uh, saving a copy of this report or downloading the model file for work, um, perhaps sharing with another person. You've got the capability up here on the menu to export your Power BI model into PowerPoint or PDF or to export the data for analysis in Excel. You've got a very easy share option to share the report. You can embed the report in SharePoint Online. You can embed it in a website. And we'll also talk a little bit later about a new enhancement to the Publish to the Web feature. We see a brand new option here to chat in Teams. And so we'll talk a little bit later also about how Microsoft is making it easier and easier for us to collaborate in the use and consumption of the information we deploy through Power BI. We have the ability now for our users to comment in this report pack and also to subscribe to notifications about it and potentially to edit it, assuming you allow the rights. We have a lot of additional capabilities. We can see some related content. We can open a lineage view and see where our data was derived from. We can open usage metrics about our reports and our dashboards, and we can pin the content in this particular report page to a dashboard. A key feature that's included in this new look is the idea that this uh, toolbar is uh, greatly simplified in terms of the user experience, so it's easier to discover features in here. We've got a feature here to reset to default so that if your user has made some changes to some of the filters that are deployed in your report, they can click one button and take it back to the state it was in when you actually deployed it. Your users have the capability to either use bookmarks that you have created for them to ease their navigation through the report, to identify specific filter combinations that you have set for them, and also to set their own bookmarks if they want to. And then for display, perhaps on a uh, projector or other um, 
type of environments, you can set it up to display for full screen, or you can make other adjustments to actual size, fit to width or fit to page. And for accessibility reasons, you can also change it over to high contrast video. So those are some of the key uh, looks. We've got the simplified action bar. We've got some uh, the page navigation over on the left, by the way, the report author can choose where that sits. Um, the traditional location was on the bottom of the screen. They can uh, retain that or put it over on the left as it sits right now. I like that. I feel like it's a better use of screen real estate, at least in my environment. I have uh, re uh, reduced the far left navigation pane in order to create additional real estate over here. So we can click on the show the navigation pane and expand that if we want to or collapse it again. It's also a lot easier if you are one level higher, so not in an actual report, but in your app workspace in Power BI to identify new workspaces, easier to scan them, to find what you need, to get data, and to search, take quick actions, and so on and so forth. We also have over at the far right side of our screen, we see our filter panes. So there aren't any filters displayed for this entire report pack or for this specific page. Uh, or for any particular visualization that we have highlighted, but each of those would appear in the filter pane if we deployed those. And this is a recently released new experience for filters. Again, I think it's a great uh, improvement on Power BI. It allows us to move a lot of the slicer activity that we put onto our report canvas off of the screen, thereby creating more space on the report canvas for us to deploy information. Should we go into the dashboards, you would also see that there's a simplified action experience there too. Let's move on. Another one of the new features that's been deployed this month is the idea of watermarks. And so this is an image of the Power BI desktop report canvas with no data in the data model. And so this is all focusing on helping your users to easily discover what their next action should be. And so their next action, when there's not any data, is to add data. And so they've uh, extended three of the primary use cases for getting data, importing it from Excel, importing it from SQL Server, and pasting data into a blank table. They also have deployed on board a sample data set so that if your users don't have any data that they really want to work with initially, they can grow in their experience at using Power BI Desktop with the provided sample data set. As always, there is the option to get data from another source right at the bottom of the screen there. Let's take a look at the next page. Once you've added the data into the model, the watermark simplifies and again reminds you what's the next step. The next step is to build visuals with your data. And so you can go to the fields pane over on the right side of Power BI Desktop and drag fields onto the report canvas and then add uh, the data into the particular visualizations as necessary or switch to a different visualization from the one that Power BI Desktop will select as its um, best guess at, at the one that you want based on the data that you've set in there. So getting started quickly with the watermarks aimed at helping anybody Download Power BI Desktop for free and use it quickly and easily to perform very powerful analyses of any data that they have access to. That's one of the key value propositions for Power BI. It has been since the beginning and continues to be. Moving on, Power BI now has a new logo. So gone is the uh, either three-dimensional or two-dimensional uh, black column chart in a frame, and we now have a more stylized uh, three-dimensional, um, well, implied three-dimensional uh, column chart, which is much more reminiscent of the icons now being used for the rest of the Office 365 suite. And so if you are Using Power BI, you will have already seen this icon replace the uh, brighter yellow single shade icon on your um, taskbar on your uh, workstation. No change uh, for you to actually make. You'll get that information automatically or that uh, new experience automatically. When you open Power BI Desktop, 
you'll get a familiar splash screen with the new logo in it, but there's a new feature in there, a splash screen dismiss. So if you find that you have accidentally clicked on the Power BI icon on your toolbar and it's opening Power BI and you don't actually want Power BI opened, you now have an opportunity, as with the rest of the Office 365 suite, to cancel by clicking on the X in the splash screen and dismissing Power BI. So those are some of the key user look and feel experiences that have been deployed this month in Power BI. I think that the user experience has been greatly simplified with these, and there's some uh, additional attractiveness, I think, to uh, new users especially, uh, making Power BI a little bit more achievable for them. Let's move into some of the more uh, technical capabilities now. We're gonna go into data preparation. One of the features that really excites me this month is the new feature that allows us to dynamically change the dimension. You'll see in these two column charts, the one on the bottom left is providing us the dimension of by country and showing us then just a uh, daily, um, this is COVID deaths uh, rate uh, by country in a descending view. And in the upper right, we have changed uh, the selector, the user accessible slicer that's on our report page to aggregate by continent. And so heretofore, users have not had the ability to change a particular visualization on a page so that it's presenting the uh, different dimension on it. You actually had to have either two of them on a page or two different pages that presented that information differently or drill up or drill down. And so uh, this is a great new capability. There are some limitations uh, in use of this right now. So we're looking for it to continue to get better. Uh, right now, the key limitations for this are that one, uh, you have to have one or more direct query tables and the following direct query sources are not supported right now. T-SQL based data sources such as SQL Server, Azure SQL, Synapse SQL pools, and Synapse SQL on demand pools. Um, Live Connect data sources like Azure Analysis Services, SSAS, and Power BI data sets are not supported with this right now, uh, nor are Oracle, Teradata, and relational uh, SAP HANA. There is partial support through um, XMLA and Tom Endpoint programmability for SAP BW and for SAP HANA. So again, we look for this to continue to evolve. It's a very powerful capability. It's very exciting to have it. Uh, I think that you'll identify quickly some use cases uh, where this information will be very useful to you and your colleagues. Let's take a quick jaunt over to the Power BI desktop now. Here we are in Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna just minimize that a little bit so that we see the whole thing on my screen. So we see the familiar navigation along the bottom of the page in this screen. The new feature I wanna show you right now is called Automatic Table Detection from Excel Files. And I'm going to show you actually where you go to set that up. We go into Report Options and Settings and then select Options. Now, this is an area that does need to become familiar to you because it's an exciting pathway towards some interesting features. There are a lot of settings in here that you'll notice that maybe I have set differently than you do uh, for specific reasons. And so look for future webinars where we'll talk about things like why we turn off auto date time for new files and such like that. Note that our options here are set into two groups. One is global settings and the other is current file settings. And so we're going to take a look at this particular one uh, at preview features. And so if you're watching our webinars and you see that we talk about features that are still available in preview, you will need to come in here to the global settings and preview features to enable some of these features that you may want to select. So I told you about automatic table detection from Excel. And so in here, this is referred to as Excel table inference. Related features are JSON table inference and new web table inference right there. What these do is they 
will automatically identify sections of each Excel workbook or uh, a JSON file for uh, recommending to you as the target that you want to import into Power BI Desktop. So with JSON tables, it's going to automatically flatten the JSON into a table. Previously, users had to flatten the records and the lists manually, which took several steps. Power BI Desktop makes it fairly simple to do, but you did actually have to work through the process of doing that. Uh, with Excel, I found in testing in the past several days that this is greatly accelerating the process of importing uh, tables or data from Excel, whether or not it's currently in a table and the cleanup that necessarily has to happen in importing most Excel tables, where you're getting rid of page headers, you're getting rid of uh, or promoting your column headers to be the field names in Power BI and so on. So just come in here, tick the boxes for the features that you want, and uh, Power BI Desktop will allow you to more quickly um, work with Excel files and JSON files. Okay, let's go back out of this. We're going to take another look at another one of our uh, data preparation capabilities, which is the updated SharePoint Online List Connector. We're going to go to Get Data and More. Then we're going to go to Online Services. And right there at the top of our list, we have SharePoint Online List. So I'm going to select that. In the SharePoint Online List Connector, Microsoft is now making available two different views for the same data. They're making available either all or default. So the default view is what you're going to see and what you see right now um, based on what you set in your settings. You can opt into using the new connector by selecting 2.0 beta as this is still in testing right now. So if I select 2.0 beta and then select advanced options, you'll see now that the default view mode is that we're going to retrieve all columns from our SharePoint online list. The new feature we have available here is that we can choose to pull the columns that are set into the default view of a SharePoint list. Again, becoming more efficient at our use of Power BI to extract data from where it currently resides. That can, if you've got your default view in the SharePoint list set appropriately, greatly reduce the steps it takes you to translate the information from the existing SharePoint list to make it ready for use in Power BI. Microsoft has also released some new connectors uh, for Spigot and Eway CRM. And so that puts the list of connectors um, that you have available in Power BI north of, I believe the number is 270. Uh, and so you should be able to retrieve data from just about any source that has a public API. And if not, if it's a popular enough source, it's likely on Microsoft's roadmap. By the way, if you're interested in the roadmap, do search for Power BI Roadmap or Power Platform Roadmap, and you will find the information that Microsoft has released as to what's in their release cadence expected within the next year or so, as well as get ideas. You can also search for Power BI User Voice, User Voice being one word, or for User Voice for any of the other Microsoft Office services and tools. With user voice, you have the opportunity to suggest to Microsoft features that you believe would be useful that would help you, and also to weigh in by voting on features that are suggested by others in the community. Uh, I've had the pleasure of suggesting some features and then receiving periodic uh, updates from Microsoft via email, and then seeing a feature released and getting an email that say, hey, this feature that you uh, suggested or that you supported has been released. It's now generally available or it's available in preview. And um, so that's a really great uh, reinforcement for users of the uh, importance that Microsoft places on their input about what is uh, necessary for Power BI to uh, really have it fully support your organization. So I strongly recommend that you check out both uh, user voice and also the um, roadmap. Okay, let's move on to reporting. We're gonna go back over to the Power BI service. And so here we are back in our web browser. 
And another of the features that I find particularly interesting here in Power BI is the ability to personalize visuals. And so your users um, may feel that another visual will help to view the information differently, or you may have a, a set of users that is split among those who prefer different visuals for the same data. Rather than having to give them different report sets or multiple pages in the report set, there is a feature over here that allows you to personalize the visual. And so we're just gonna click on it right here. And let's zoom in on that window and take a look at it. So you see that this visual is set right now to being a line chart. And so we have the visualization type right there. We can make changes to what's on the axis. So we could select maybe instead of date, maybe we want month or we want year. Uh, maybe we want to add a legend to the field. And so we give the users some additional control or the option for some control in this uh, visualization. They are limited to the fields that you leave visible that you don't hide in the data query. And also there is an option in the settings over where we were looking at preview features earlier to turn off the visualization personalized feature in the event that you feel that that would be a problem or a distraction. But as I'm a user in here, I'm not acting as the report publisher or report owner right now. I'm acting as a user and I choose to change that line chart to a, an area chart. Or perhaps I think that it would be better as a, uh, clustered column chart. It's going to take a little bit. There we go. And I could certainly change my axis here if I chose to and drill down. And I happen to know that I've got a year month down in here. And so there's that. And I want to change this so that I'm sorting ascending. And you see here, let's pause a moment in our demonstration. You will find these tips popping up periodically. If you have not yet used personalize this visual, you'll get a, a tip for that also if you have it turned on when you're going in to look at a report in the web service. And so this is again, helping you to discover new features. So I'm just gonna acknowledge that, say, got it. And then I want to sort ascending and what it has defaulted to, if we take a quick look at this, is it's defaulted to sorting by cumulative assignment baseline work. I wanna change it to sort by year month. And so you can see now my horizontal axis down here is sorting by year month. It was a subtle change. There's the, the uh, I believe December sorted previously prior to November. So anyhow, this visualization personalization feature is a an interesting new capability. When you get a report requirement from somebody that basically says, I want to drill down, um, typically you need to go through a further set of questions in your report requirements gathering about drill down into what, what do you want to see when you drill down, where are you drilling down from? Additionally, this gives them the opportunity to explore the capabilities in Power BI and potentially see additional uh, views of the information that they didn't know they wanted before. Let's move on. Some other interesting features. Let's go take a look at Power BI Premium per user licensing and then the new Power BI experiences in Teams. So a, another new feature that's particularly compelling is the Power BI Premium per user pricing. Power BI Premium is the capability to license across your organization a higher processor capacity, higher data storage uh, capability that you then deploy your app workspaces into the premium capacity. Heretofore, this was a very costly uh, endeavor uh, in the context of small and medium-sized organizations trying to work with a handful of users or a comparative handful. Really, the value proposition for many organizations seems to start at more than 500 users using Power BI. And so with this, you can say, I've got a very small number of users who need to use Power BI Premium. And so you can license Power BI Premium per user for those users who need the uh, capability to uh, increase to a 100 gigabyte model size. Maybe they need to refresh more than the eight times a day that's available in the standard Power BI Pro model to up to 48 
uh, times a day. Paginated reports are something that we've had many asks for here at Advisicon. Uh, and so we're looking at all of these types of capabilities in order to serve our clients better. And we're really uh, pleased that Microsoft deployed this feature. In addition to our Power BI Premium, our other feature that we uh, want to talk about is the new Power BI experience in Teams. And so let me bring across my Teams window. And you can see that here in Teams, I've actually got it open to a team in which I have deployed this same model using the Power BI app. And so I now have my ability to share with the team, to collaborate with the team, to post about it in Teams, and so that my users don't have to go over to the web browser. If we're growing in our use so that they pretty much live in Teams all day long, then that's just great. They can live in Teams and they can now get their Power BI reports in Teams. The same security that controls their access to information in the Power BI web service is going to control their access to uh, information in Teams also. So what are the next steps? What do I want you to think about doing with the information you've got here? As I started out, additional Power BI enhancements are becoming available nearly daily. Microsoft has constantly innovated for more than five years since they released Power BI Desktop to the world, and they're continuing to do so. These are interesting, compelling, and helpful features. And so if you're going to be working in Power BI as a developer, as an analyst, you want to commit to ongoing education about these features. We've got training here at Advisicon and would love to help you with uh, targeted courses in addition to webinars like this one. And so we can do custom courses for you, or we can do on-demand courses through our learning management system. So commit to routine skills development, register for a class soon, or call us for a Power BI consultation. We recognize that not every organization has got the capacity or bandwidth to develop all of the reports and queries that they really need in order to run their business successfully. So we're more than happy to partner with you to provide consulting services to either help you over some sort of a challenge that you're experiencing doing the development or to provide resource augmentation or maybe provide some uh, app development in order to fully integrate Power BI into uh, your applications that your organization develops and deploys through Power BI Embedded. With that, thank you for joining me for the webinar today. I really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions, please reach out to us through contact at advisicon.com. Follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channels, and look forward to talking to you again very soon. Bye now.